USA! 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 I would rather die fighting for what is right than to ever live accepting what is wrong. We will shut you down, we will cite you, and if we need you, we will arrest you and we will take you to jail. Have you had any close contact with anybody under investigation with COVID-19? Freedom. Our country, the United States of America, is about our freedom. And our freedom's been impacted right now. The time for educating people into compliance is over. Don't be stupid. Don't come out. Don't advertise on social media. We're watching you. This is my father. He was one. Here's his orders from the Marine Corps. He was one of five to get selected uh, to be on the honor guard for FDR. And this is him, he's 21 years old. President Nixon gave this pen to my father. Huh. My dad flew on Air Force One with President Nixon. I'm uh, Kevin Henderson, I'm sheriff of Ontario County, uh, which is in New York. Uh, the sheriff is an elected position. Um, people uh, support their sheriffs, and I'm blessed that I have that here in Ontario County. And uh, when they, they give me a call, they're angry. Uh, how can the governor say that I can't run my construction company? How can the governor say that I can't open my beauty salon? Because I'm not closing the store. If they arrest me, I have someone that will keep the store open because it's our right to keep the store open. This is a perilous time for our country. Never before have we had to make a decision between our health and our freedom. This is not politics to me, this is a disease, this is a public health issue. There's something absolutely wrong when our freedoms are at the point now where we have to ask permission to go to work. We don't ask for any rights, we take them. You hungry, hamburger, hot dog? Simple things like getting together in groups are prohibited. That your actions were selfish, putting your own interests ahead of those of the community. A lot of people want to go back, they just want to go back. You see it every day, you see demonstrations all over the country. My people Stay here. He asked me to move. You said you're failing to comply with oh, the really? law. Because I complied. And you, you asked got, you asked you got me. to an altercation. There's only going to be so many more times you little dogs are going to do this crap. 0.03 chance of dying from COVID in the state of California. Is that, does that necessitate sheltering in place? The mayor called a news conference today on the west side where last week these viral images of an illegal party were seen around the world. Please come away from each other and separate. Elizabeth, New Jersey is now using drones to spread the life-saving message. You are not immune to this virus. Are we ready to relinquish our freedom? Drones looking into our backyards? That includes tight spaces between buildings, behind schools, and in backyards. For your own safety and for those around you, please stand at least one meter apart. Thank you. Robot dogs monitoring us in the parks? This is the stuff we used to watch in sci-fi movies. And now it's real. There's no win here, just so we all understand. There is no win. This is not a situation where there's a win. Will someone please explain to me why we must ease back into normalcy when we should have never left it in the first place? We left it based on bad information. 
I think for many of us, the issue is an incoherent message from our leaders. Come to Chinatown. Here we are. We're, again, careful, safe, and come join us. Uh, we have uh, sheriff's deputies in places like Brevard County. You know, they're going to be out on ATVs, making sure there's no groups. Should we stay home? Should we not stay home? Uh, the second is social responsibility. Stay at home. Don't get infected in the first place. You're saving lives. Does relinquishing our freedom actually translate into health for the community? Californians out exercising and spending time in the sun during the pandemic versus a similar sunny day in New York City where Times Square is empty. Why are they exercising so much power over the people? Why are they taking away our rights, our freedoms? They were quick to act based on that false information and they're slow dragging their feet and, and restoring back those freedoms that they've taken away from us. It makes you wonder, why does California, which has twice the population of New York, have such a smaller problem with COVID-19? Because we've done everything we can to close down, how are you still generating 600 new cases every day. Where are they coming from? This is a surprise. Overwhelmingly, the people were at home. In case you missed that, the vast majority of people getting sick are those who stayed at home. When you combine that with nursing homes, that's nearly 90% of people getting sick are those who stayed inside. 18% of the people came from nursing homes, but 66% of the people were at home, uh, which is shocking to us. Did our lockdown and the losing of our jobs actually keep us safe? Were they working? No. Uh, they were retired or they were unemployed. So according to the stats being generated in the epicenter of COVID-19 in America, the vast majority of those getting sick are those who aren't working and are staying inside. And during this tough time, it makes it more difficult when our leaders don't live what they preach. We're saving lives. But a photo that surfaced on social media showing the mayor after getting a trim has some asking, what about me? I'm the public face of the city. I'm on national media and I'm out in the public eye. And, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a person who I take my personal hygiene very seriously. As I said, I felt like I needed to um, have a haircut. I'm not able to do that myself, and so I got a haircut. Should our leaders hold themselves to the same standards that they apply to us? I know Bill de Blasio uh, as like a snitch line. <laughs> <laughs> I know Eric Garcetti in Los Angeles as a snitch line. How do you feel about something like that? People ratting each other out for not being uh, socially distant <laughs> or, or whatever it may be under these, at this crazy time. Well, it's funny you say that. Um, so when the governor, Governor Cuomo, uh, initiated the uh, report hotline, uh, snitch line as you call it, we call it the report hotline, I don't want to say snitch. Um, so the governor, how did he handle that? Well, for those that are non-compliant, we're going to give the authority to investigate and those to receive these tip line calls to the sheriffs. I get emails constantly so-and-so is not wearing their protective mask. Such and such business are allowing customers in the store without wearing masks. Uh, So-and-so is going to have a party at their house, which can't happen. Um, we, again, we take it seriously. I don't want to enforce. I want to educate. Uh, we're all under stress. Stressful times indeed. This is the rally where I was arrested that took place in a parking lot in Raleigh, North Carolina. I want you to pay attention to that arrow. That is where I am arrested later in the day, currently where a huge truck is parked. We were there to cover the rally for our documentary on COVID and decided to go across the street and interview a healthcare professional who had an opposing view to the protesters in the parking lot. How long have you been a pharmacist? 30 years. 30 years, and how much longer do you think people should stay home? Probably about a week or two longer as we start to relieve the restrictions. What is your story that you want the people at home to know? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'd like for them to know that I understand and empathize completely. The, the economy is in the pits right now, but I, I, I have to weigh that personally on life 
and money. And I really feel like we need to just keep things closed a little bit longer to save as many lives as we possibly can. What do you say to the people who are going to watch this and say, well, you're telling people to stay home, but you're outside. I've got my mask on. I'm doing what I can, but I think I need to get our word out. And like I said, this is where the where, where people, reporters, and the news is coming. They're not coming to our places of business and the hospitals to get things actually. This is pretty much the worst hospital hit in New York City from the COVID pandemic. Yeah, that's very interesting. We we've uh, gone all throughout the United States filming this documentary and getting. We've been outside of hospitals and security. I mean, they, they throw you off the grounds. It's, it's, it's really strict at hospitals. So it's very, as much as we've wanted to tell the stories at a hospital, it's not allowed. And then, and then you're off duty. They have you sign these confidentiality statements that you all, you know, talk without letting them know or whatever. So yeah, I understand. I, I just think a lot of people are, are pointing fingers depending on which political side you are. And this is not politics to me. This is a disease. This is a public health issue. We went back across the street, waved hello to the snipers up top, and then started documenting what was going on in the parking lot. Like, this is our fourth week, you guys. We're just gonna stay put today. Our goal is to really not engage. I want you to pay attention to where I'm standing right now. Later on in the day, that becomes the exact spot where I was filming and was arrested. Go ahead, no worries, no worries. Come on through, do what you gotta do. You'll also notice that big truck is still there. This space for the majority of the day was used as a parking spot. Yeah. Sheriff Baxter in Monroe County had an individual through the, through, that was uh, ordered to be quarantined by public health because that individual at the time allegedly had COVID-19 refused to quarantine. Well, again, the only way we can detain is by court order. You're able to get a court order to detain someone for having COVID-19. Yes, under wow. under the law. Yes. Let's say somebody. Let's say you came to arrest me, and you said, you know, we think you have COVID-19. I'm going to say to you, prove it. If a if a doctor says that you have COVID-19, so if or I tested co positive, tested or had symptoms where they felt that you should be quarantined, because this individual to finish what happened in Monroe County, they get a court order. That individual's taken into the custody of the sheriff. Come to find out, that individual was negative for COVID-19. That, that's, that's, I mean, because that's the scary part of this. Yes, it is. Because somebody can call on the, the report line. Yes. And say, hey, Emily has COVID. And then even without a positive test, it's as, just as a normal citizen, it's scary to think that you could be detained and quarantined with a court order with there being no evidence that you actually have COVID. When we came to the rally, the intention was to film an episode on freedom. I really didn't want to make any of this and the arrest about me. But since the arrest, there's been so much said online and on the news about what happened that it's become part of the story. This was the first time in my life that I had ever been physically detained, handcuffed, put into a police car and taken to a jail where all of your rights are stripped from you where people talk horribly to you where people ignore you where you are placed in a situation that is dangerous unhealthy against your will is something that sticks with you my arrest experience is one that I'll never forget and it helps me cherish my freedom even more a thousand dollar bond okay so I have to try to find a bell bondsman. It, it's, it's glorious in here. I mean, everything you would see, it's, it's, it's pretty surreal. I'm in a holding tank, like with the six other guys. Yeah, I'm at the Wake County facility. Oh, I'm here. Yeah, Don't I, worry, I'm out front. I've already spoken with people. Oh, awesome. So, <laughs> if you can... Um, Are you good? Are you sore? No, no, that guy was hand handling me pretty rough getting into the car. The person who said that they have the bail, that is, um, who is that? Her name is Kay, she's their bail bond person. Okay, well contact her, because it's just a process. I want to get the hell out of here. Okay, you got it, I'll give her a call right now. Again, we we have a constitution, we we have constitutional rights, it's called the amendments. We, you know, you know, we have many amendments, one of them is 
you know, you can't detain somebody illegally. Exactly. What's the law that allows you to arrest me for having COVID? That or, would, or suspected of having right. COVID. Right. So that would be through the public health law. If I have an order from a judge that you have to take Emily into custody because she has COVID or maybe has symptoms of COVID, I'm going to go arrest her. I am going to take her in physical custody. Yes, that's something that we're trying to deal with. And that's new to us. Yeah, because where's the probable cause? So, well, the probable cause would be coming from the medical practitioner and or medical professional. But that professional clearly was wrong because the person didn't have COVID. Yep, yep. that was an interesting case. That would case. just infuriate me. Sure, sure. How long was that person detained? Uh, I don't think for that long. I, I really, again, it's not my case. I, I, I think less than, maybe less than 48 hours. It just seems there should be a logical solution to the situation. You could literally walk out to that test to the, the individual and say, hey, we have a court order to arrest yep. you because you're suspected of having COVID, which sounds insane to me. It sounds insane, it sounds like Nazi Germany to me to say you're suspected of having a disease that you had nothing to do with contracting. So. It seems like an easy solution to say, here's a test, take it, we'll, we'll wait five minutes and... And I, th and I think that's probably the direction that, that if we have to continue, it sounds like that we're, obviously we know that we're going to be in this for a while, it's not right. going to be over next week. Uh, I would much rather do it that way. When all these directives are starting to come out, I'm like, well, wait a minute here, I'd rather use positive education than enforcement. Quote, we hold it to be self-evident that all persons are created equal. I'm an American who loves my country and values my freedom for myself and all my other fellow Americans. It's one of the reasons we decided to do a documentary on COVID-19. We wanted to see how this pandemic was affecting our country. It's been said that I was arrested because I was in a private parking lot where I didn't belong that I was impeding traffic. My friends, this is a rally held in a parking lot where 300 people, plus TV news crews and other documentarians were out there doing the exact same thing that Emily and I were doing. Well, can we, can we interview you? Okay. I'm uh, happy to interview you. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I'm out here for all the people that are being harmed and to stand up against an oppressive, self-serving government at the federal state federal state level because local people don't even have a choice in what they can do. And, and for the Americans that want to work and be free, I blame the media. I think what, what happened was that the media got on this and scared the crap out of everyone and told everybody about this horrible disease. And, and in January, people didn't know what the disease was. But they still scared everyone. And when the people are scared, the politicians respond. But the politicians say, we're going to take advantage of this opportunity of the scared populace to increase our power and our control over the people. In fact, all three interviews that Emily and I did at the parking lot were within about 10 feet of my own car. This picture here shows this is my car. This is the Hispanics for Trump car where I was arrested. And there's that big, huge truck using that space for a parking spot. While reviewing the footage of this interview, I couldn't help but notice that the same individual, Michael Berger with the parking department, who said we couldn't stand where we were standing to film next to a gentleman's car, is the same individual in the blue shirt right here in the video doing absolutely nothing about that big truck that was parked there for the vast majority of the time that we were at the rally. I'm so glad uh, that you're here and you're making a documentary. And I'm, working hard. I'm, I'm glad to um, help you if I've helped. You have. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks, Jason. Bye bye. When we decided to drive coast to coast to film this documentary, one of the biggest concerns was are we going to be locked out of states? Will certain jurisdictions allow us in or allow us out? Chief among those was, of course, New York City. What kind of freedoms would be restricted in the epicenter of COVID-19? You go to New York City, if you're down, down maybe lower Manhattan or wherever you may go in New York City, that's really the epicenter of what we're dealing with in this state. Uh, don't be surprised if you get questioned. Don't be surprised if you might be told, no, you're not gonna be here. So for summer work and patrol, one thing that we heard was 
Hey, if you go to New York City, the cops may stop you and ask you if you, you know, if you have any symptoms or anything. But exactly the opposite. Um, it seems to be exactly the opposite. Like they're like, hey, you guys, we don't want to mess with you. Do your thing. You're still free to basically do anything. It's just wear the mask and keep your distance. Even though we saw cops everywhere in New York City, we never had a single problem with them. And we never witnessed a single incidence of the police asking anyone about PPE or social distancing. The only encounter that I did have with a cop was when I was actually in the middle of a street when I was filming the steam coming out of a manhole. Yo, get off the street. So how and why did I get arrested? We asked the gentleman who owns the Hispanics for Trump vehicle if we could interview him. He was very proud of the wrapping on his car and asked if we could shoot him next to his vehicle. Given the fact that there have been people walking, parking, congregating, filming, and just hanging out there all day, I didn't think that would be an issue. Michael Berger asked me to move my camera and tripod, and I complied. Here's the angle I used to start the interview before I was asked to move my camera. And this is the angle after I moved my camera right next to Mr. Flores's car. Which again didn't make much sense to me given the fact that people have been using that parking lot all day, but so be it. I did comply. And then for some unknown reason to me, Michael Berger came up to me again while next to this gentleman's car and told me I wasn't allowed to film there giving no reason why. After which he went away snickering <laughs> and proceeded to call the police. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I'm gonna kick you off this parking lot. Right. For what? How you doing? Doing good, you? Good, what's your name, brother? My name is Joshua Flores. Perfect, and what are you doing here? I'm actually protesting my First Amendment and having some fun with it. I mean, for example, we just saw something that that just blew my mind. I'm a conservative Hispanic that believes in a conservative value. I mean, that's why I have these on my car. Uh, it's just, it's uh, professionally done. But at the same time, you know, we're here to, to stand up to Governor Cooper. We're here to stand up to the government and say we're not gonna take no more crap. Freedom, our country, United States of America is about our freedom. And our freedom's been impacted right now. I hope nobody in the law enforcement would say, you can't be here. That's not what they should be saying. All we're asking is, Work with us, and we'll work with you. That's what I'm hoping, but I can't guarantee. I mean, what do you what do you think about, hey, gentlemen? Uh, just coming to let y'all know that from this point forward, y'all are now trespassed from this parking lot, uh, from State Parking Division. My name is Michael Berger. I'm the Parking Operations Manager, and I'm asking y'all to leave the property now. Uh, what cause? Because you failed to comply with the rules earlier today. I didn't it was when the police confronted me. There's only one thing I really wanted. I just wanted to know why I was engaging in the same activities as the other 300 people in the parking lot where the rally was being held. They regulate the, the lot. And he asked, the rules. he asked me to move. He said you're failing to comply. With oh really? Because I complied. And you asked, you asked. You got into an altercation. He told you to leave. You need to leave. So why should I leave? leave? Then you're trespassing. Place me under arrest for trespassing. Wait a minute, how's the trespass? It's not a law. Hey, it has to be a law. Hey, hey, here's the whole hey, here's the whole, hey, here's the whole thing that happened. He asked him to move. Right? And he moved. In anticipation of leaving, I removed my camera from this situation. He moved. He moved. And now when we were doing an interview, now he's asking me to leave because we're doing it in the middle of the interview. All we wanted to know. Who's trespassing? How's this trespassing? was the reason for being trespassed and why we were being singled out. Just for a second, let's move. No, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and... I know, before we move into like... They, they you got this on camera because I'm going to take I'm a lawsuit out. Him, 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 him. Because they've been trespassed. No, they're not because he has not explained himself. All right, are you, are, are you going to leave the property? I, I would like to know. I have a right to know the reason why I, I, I broke the law according to his sentence. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Before you ask The law this. you're violating is trespassing because look, he's trespassing. trespassing. All I know is, so he, look. So he can you decide that I'm trespassing? Who's doing an interview with me? Are you going to be part of the lawsuit against the police department? You already have enough charges coming your way. 
They are peacefully practicing the freedom of speech. You're either going to leave now, get off the property, or you're going to be placed under arrest. What, what's classified as property? Which one are you going to do? Are you going I tell you what. I tell you what. Get in your car. This, this get in your car. Your car is your property. Absolutely ridiculous. Your parking lot is it? He asked me to move. My camera. What's your name, sir? I'm, I'm not. I told what's you I'm not going to debate this case. Instigate. Are you going so to leave the property? Instigate. Are you What's refusing to leave the property? No. You know this is the instigator. You're not refusing to leave the property. Shut down the freedom of press. Well, then, then you need to leave the property. Otherwise, you're refusing. Flex of power. This is a flex of power. This is a flex of power. When the man I interviewed told me I'm calling a representative, the officer leans towards him and trespasses him. Where, where am I allowed You as well, sir. This is a flex of power. Because he was interviewing me? This is a flex and then another officer turns to Emily, who's filming me, and trespasses her. Ma'am, you as well. Are you going to tell me to stop recording? So I've been in this. I'm being Am I violating? What about? Can I get yes. your gun? What's your name? So, in the span of a few seconds, you saw one officer trespass me, the man I was interviewing, and another officer trespass Emily. So, to recap, I'm being trespassed for standing and doing an interview. The man I was interviewing was trespassed for leaning against his own car and being interviewed. And Emily was trespassed for filming me complete an interview of a man leaning against his own car. USA! While seeking clarification for why I was trespassed, as I still hadn't been given a reason, the crowd started chanting USA. After a few chants, I put my hand down, turned to leave, and that's when I was arrested. Shut down the First Amendment. There's only going to be so many more times you little thugs are going to do this crap, is all I'm saying. Only so many more times. Mark it. Mark it. Mark it. And I got your face, buddy. You, you just did that. You just shut down a U.S. citizen. You just shut down a citizen. You can't talk. Be gone! Be as you can see, I walked without incident, and due to being physically disabled, I have to watch every step I take. What just happened here? I filmed an interview and I was arrested. As we approached the car, the officer was too aggressive, which prompted this reaction out of me. Hey, where are the car keys? Viga! Viga! Using a disabled person. Even though they trespassed myself, Emily, and Joshua, I was the only one arrested. Emily even asked about what she should do with the car. The car's on the property. I'm going to have to go in the property and get it. That's fine. That's fine. That you swore to uphold us, Breaker. How's it feel, Oathbreaker? How's it feel, Oathbreaker? Officer Fowler said he would escort her to the car to make sure she was able to get it. You say you're going to get some vehicle off the property? Yes, sir. All right, we'll assist you. All right. We'll go do that now. And where am I supposed to go? How do I, how do I help Jason for being wrongly wrongfully arrested. Can we even explain what's happening? Give yeah, me going to the magistrate. 100% let's go. Huh? 100% let's go. Where are we going? Out of here. But apparently a supervisor told all of the police officers to leave the premises immediately. Hey, how are you? Um, I was asked to leave the premises. However, the car is on the property. Do I have a uh, right to move from the car? The car is on public property, of course. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. They asked me to leave, so I was just con I was really totally confused. Yeah. The police never told me why I was trespassed, but they did tell the news that apparently I was blocking the flow of traffic in and out of the state-owned parking lot. During the entire interview, there was only one car driving one mile per hour that tried to pass me, and it got by without any issue. This car was actually part of the protest and never attempted to come in and out of the parking lot while I was filming. You're good, you're good. Here's the driver of that car. We were actually, the truck with the banners on it is the one that um, he was supposedly telling him to get out of the way, way for. for yeah. We had an, an altercation with him earlier because uh, we wanted to drive up through the this next row over where all the vehicles, uh, where all the people were standing. And so he got out of the truck and said, would you mind if we drive up? And the people got out of the way and we drove up. We came back around and Mr. Parking Lot attendant came over and said, you can't drive up here. I said, this is a parking lot. I said, yes, but there are people up there. I said, we just spoke to them and they were happy to move out of the way for us. Well, that might be, but we don't want the liability. I said, what liability? I'm driving less than one mile an hour. 
I was the only one driving around. Did you, you feel yeah. as if we were blocking? No. I didn't. And yeah. we yeah. actually kept a very good conversation. We had a, with you. We had a conversation sure. with said, yeah. we're like, oh, we're sorry we're in your way. We're like, no, you're fine. And by the time we came back around the next time, he had called his buddies over from the police force, and they stood there waiting for 15 minutes to decide when to make their move. Awesome. Which, coincidentally, was after the crowd had started to disperse and people were going home. It was nonsense. If he's going to arrest that guy, he needs to arrest every single one of us who are out here doing the exact same thing that he was doing. What has this experience been like with COVID? How has, how has this changed what you do as a sheriff? Well, you saw when you came into my facility this morning to do this interview, one of my staff members, one of my correctional deputies, had the questionnaire, right? and we'll, we'll, allow, we'll allow you to see what we do. All right, I just have to ask you a couple uh, uh, questions and if you have any symptoms of the COVID-19. Do you have a fever? No, I do not. Cough? No. Nope. Sore throat? No. Nope. Uh, shortness of breath? No. Nope. Any muscle aches? No. Nope. Chills? Headaches? No. Nope. Excellent. Uh, in the last 30 days, have you traveled outside of the uh, United States? Have you traveled outside of the New York State in the yes. past 30 days? Have you had any close contact with anybody under investigation with COVID-19? No, I have not. Give me just a couple minutes and I'll get a hold of the sheriff for you. Thank you. I'm walking out of the jail. Uh, very interesting too is uh, it's not COVID friendly at all. Absolutely zero accommodations for anybody that's ADA. If you had told me when I filmed this that I would be going through an arrest process two weeks later, I would have found it hard to believe. It was very interesting to find out just what it is like to be admitted as an inmate during COVID-19. Did, did they test you for COVID? No. Were you in rooms with other people? I was in a filthy room with yep. six filthy. other people. Yep. That the, it's and there's just a there's just a toilet there, yep. no toilet paper. Yep. It's absolutely vile. It's probably six, closer to six feet too, right? Oh, everybody's smashed together. They didn't isolate any of us. They just throw us in a holding tank. There's a phone that sits on the side of the wall. And you gotta understand, Emily and I have been filming COVID. Do you know what's going through my mind as I'm sitting there? I'm like, are you kidding me? This is a death trap for COVID. I cannot for the life of me believe that they haven't tested any of us. I can't believe that they are not using PPE themselves. I can't believe that they are not providing PPE for the inmates. It's just crazy that we're all breathing onto a phone. We're all touching a phone. There's no way for us to wash our hands. There's no way for us to, to do anything and we have to use that phone. And it was very eye-opening for me to sit there in a holding tank that is filthy during the worst pandemic in our lives. In the one place that they could make sure we social distance. And the one place they can make sure we use PPE, that we have the ability to wash our hands, that we have the ability to be quarantined, that we have the ability to be tested. They failed on every single step of the way. This has been an incredible episode for us to put out. Well, I can tell you emphatically that if we do not stand up and demand our rights. And it's very dear to me because my freedom for a moment in time was taken from me. Our freedoms, our liberty, that we do not stand up in defense of the Constitution. If you've never been arrested, let me tell you, it's horrible. We should all value and cherish the freedom that we have. We're going to get exactly what we deserve. And what is that? We're going to be ruled by tyrants. It's my hope that in us flattening the curve and slowing the spread, that we don't end up losing some of those freedoms forever. <laughs>